Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we like to make sure you're on the up and up with all the latest trends when you talk about compliance, the insurance industry, HR, and so much more. We're honored to have with us Ross Carmichael. He is the Managing Director of Compliance with Higginbotham. How are you doing? Doing great, Jeremy. Glad to be here. Glad to see you again. Absolutely. You are a wealth of information when it comes to the legal landscape, what's going on, compliance, obviously the insurance industry. So give us a little bit, when you talk about Higginbotham overall, let's start there and then we'll dive into your world. But give us overall, how do you describe Higginbotham? Higginbotham is a full service insurance brokerage firm. Um, So property and casualty, employee benefits, financial services, HR consulting, risk management. Um, Again, it's a full service uh, specializing in, in, you know, business to business insurance uh, and then providing services throughout the year. We call them day two services. Uh, So, you know, day two through day 365, helping the clients that we provide insurance to uh, in different areas related to those things like risk management, population health management, compliance, et cetera. And a big part of that, obviously, is making sure that we are giving them valuable information, helping them just like you're talking about with all the things that they need to know. And so really partnering. Talk about your world now. When you talk about compliance and what you specialize in, give us your world. Sure. Uh, So my background is compliance. Uh, I'm I'm a compliance attorney. Uh, You would call it an ERISA attorney. Uh, I used to work for the Department of Labor before I joined Higginbotham uh, about a decade ago. Can't believe it's been that long, but it's been a great ride. Um, And so my background is kind of compliance and enforcement, all things uh, uh, employee benefit related. So that goes from both uh, health insurance to financial planning, like 401k, 403b. So like you said, um, uh, all the fun acronyms we get to deal with, ERISA, COBRA, HIPAA, FMLA, ADA. So all those fun things that that, uh, people that used to work in the government love to throw out there and hope you uh, don't understand them. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's your world is to help us understand them and make sure that we know what's going on. And when you talk about trends and, you know, things legislative that that could be changing, I mean, that's, you know, your your world is making sure that we are in the know. And so let's start with, you know, coming out of 2022, give us some updates there, and then we'll talk about for 2023 what's going on. So when you look back, what were some of the major things that happened in 2022 in your world? There's been a big push coming out of COVID, um, uh, just related to healthcare in general. I think that was a strong push that people had, the healthcare system being taxed, people being confused about healthcare. We've seen a really big push on um, certain areas within healthcare in the compliance area. One of them is based around pricing transparency. There's been a whole lot that's come out in the past two years and a lot of the the stuff, CARES Act and those kind of things related to uh, pricing transparency. So, uh, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of it falls on employers' shoulders, whether they want it to or not. So we've seen a lot in the compliance arena about things related to prescription drug pricing reporting, reports you have to give to the federal government. Um, posting things on your website that gives your employees access to to pricing transparency tools for their health insurance, et cetera. So there's been a really big push from the compliance standpoint on that front um, to really take what for some people may seem, uh, may see as a confusing uh, world of health insurance and make it much more user-friendly for the average end, uh, end consumer. Uh, we've also seen a really big push, especially you know post-COVID, um, uh, in um, uh, mental health. So there's been a real big push from a lot of federal agencies on making mental health uh, and telehealth available to um, individuals uh, and kind of meeting them where they are and not making it difficult to seek out those services. Now let's look at 2023. And obviously we're at the early stage of 2023. Give us some of the things that have your attention right now. You know, a lot of the things are are just uh, continuations of what we saw in 22. So there's continued reporting that employers have to do to, uh, to the federal government on their prescription drug plans. Um, they've extended the ability of people with HSAs to have telemedicine, which is a huge deal. Um, it's still a quote unquote temporary 
um, um, extension. Hopefully, uh, there's bipartisan support for a few different bills that would make those permanent, um, which would be great. Uh, another thing that we we've all kind of heard is you know uh, essentially in May the um, uh, public health emergency for COVID-19 will finally uh, come to a close, and that affects some things related to COBRA. Um, it, it removes the the requirement of employers to cover um, COVID testing at no cost. They'll still have to provide vaccines at no cost because that's considered preventive care, um, but uh, they will no longer have to cover COVID testing um, with no cost. And then also some things that we saw passed late last year related to retirement plans. So there was a, a SECURE Act that was passed year uh, a few years ago. Now we've got SECURE 2.0. So employers with 401ks need to make sure they're with their uh, getting with their retirement plan advisors and making sure that they're uh, providing all the updates and all the required um, uh, new rules and regulations that are that are going into effect for their retirement plans too. Are you seeing training provided? It's one thing to put out like the transparency around the prescription drugs. It's another for employees to actually use that and know that it's there. So are you seeing the companies, you know, one, obviously, doing that and following those guidelines. And obviously that's where, you know, Higginbotham helping them. Uh, but at the same time too, providing training so that employees are more educated and can be more proactive. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of that, especially just in the past few years. There's been a real push to help employees understand the healthcare system, help, help them make good choices, um, understand that the most expensive provider isn't necessarily always the best provider. Um, there, there's a lot of metrics that go around quality, uh, readmission rates, et cetera. So there's a lot of different tools that employers can can put in place to help uh, with the pricing transparency, with outcomes-based approaches, et cetera, and, and really help employees get to the best care available to them. So we've seen a lot of that. There's also a kind of tied into some of these regulations, a lot of things about notices and requirements um, notice requirements uh, and things for employees. So we've seen a lot around uh, disclosures. Uh, we do a lot of benefit guides for employers. So a lot of things about uh, surprise billing, transparency, and all those kind of things, notices that we've been working with employers to communicate to their employees. When you're sitting down with clients with Higginbotham, what are some of the main questions that they're asking you? So I imagine there's some common trends throughout, but what are some of the main questions that you're getting or the most popular questions you're getting? You know, the most popular questions we're getting are kind of, you know, where where does it end, right? It's it's at what point um, do, are we going to stop seeing new regulations come out and have to comply with them? Um, unfortunately, uh, I, we don't see that in the landscape anywhere soon. You know, I know we focus a lot on health insurance. We also do a lot around HR consulting. And so it seems like every single state is passing, you know, uh, it seems like every year we're getting another state that's passing a mandatory paid family leave or a mandatory paid disability. Um, we've all seen things about, uh, you know, last uh, last week, or I'm sorry, last month, we had information about um, non-competes possibly being illegal moving forward on a nationwide basis. So, um, you know, there's been not only in the health insurance space, but just in the world of HR, um, we just are, are kind of constantly getting questions on, you know, how do we manage this, especially if we're a 50 state or a multi-state company where you could have not even different paid leave rules by state, but even by locality. Some cities have paid leave rules that are different from what state you're in and are what different that are different from what your neighboring state does. So um, I think that's kind of the main questions we get are just how do we get our minds around controlling all of this and making sure we're compliant on all fronts uh, when we're just dealing with rules that are coming out of the woodwork left and right from anything from a city council up to the federal government? And obviously, then the burden is on the company to make sure that they are following all of those rules and regulations and laws. Talk about from a Higginbotham perspective, the power of partnership, you mentioned the day two services, but really being keen and focusing in on paying attention to all of these changing dynamics to make sure that companies are protected and following all the procedures and guidelines and laws. Exactly. I mean, that's kind of what we what we try to focus on is we know that in today's day and age, um, HR staffs, a lot of times, um, or HR departments are, are maybe not understaffed, but they run lean. 
um, and uh, they're pulled in a lot of directions because you've got employee benefits, you've got labor relations, you've got um, people management, et cetera. So what we really try to do is, is round out their offering and and basically be the back office support for a an HR department. Again, whether that's compliance with their health plans and a lot of these transparency rules we're talking about, or helping them understand new paid leave laws, um, or you know working with them on sample policies and procedures, handbooks, those kind of things. We're really trying to help them um, uh, wherever they need somebody to come in and be a backstop um, and allow them to, to focus, I, I would say, on their day job, which is keeping their employees happy, keeping their uh, employee, their, their company out of trouble, uh, keeping everything compliant and really helping them build that. You know, I like to call compliance basically a, a house. Um, and so you have to get that strong foundation of compliance. And then when these new rules and regulations and laws come out, you're just building another layer. So if we get you that strong foundation, it's really easy then to build on these layers where if we're just have, have you know, trying to piecemeal everything together and build everything together, it's, it's eventually going to fall apart. As you mentioned, obviously, you don't see it changing in terms of new rules and regulations and laws coming out. But what makes you hopeful when, when you look at kind of the positive side of all this? What are some positive outcomes that you see as a result of some of these changing dynamics? You know, a lot of it is uh, are things, obviously, um, uh, telehealth and mental health, very big issues currently. Um, and so, again, removing barriers to those kind of things. A lot of the pricing transparency in the long run, while it may be a compliance burden, can help not only employers, but, the, you know, the healthcare care system. Um, because, like I said, um, getting employees to the best care, um, letting them understand beforehand um, what kind of care they're going to be receiving and what they're going to be paying can also prevent situations where people aren't getting the care they need or they're getting too much care. Um, and so, you know, both, neither of those situations are good. People are getting too much care. That's a burden on the healthcare system or people are putting off care because they don't understand how the healthcare system works. And then they're getting, you know, into uh, more serious situations down the road, which are, are costlier. So again, a lot of times better outcomes equals less money. You mentioned being at Higginbotham for a decade now, which is awesome. And obviously as time flies by so fast, talk about it now internally. So in other words, helping the clients with these day two services and partnering with them to make sure that we're giving them all this valuable information. How is this valuable information and your role, you know, with this compliance, how has it helped Higginbotham? I'd say, um, especially in the past uh, decade, it's it's been a, a crazy ride. Uh, I always joke that my first day here was my it was the day before the 2012 presidential election, where there was still a, a genuine concern as to whether or not the Affordable Care Act would ever go into effect. Um, and so I had what I say is two quiet days, and then obviously uh, President Obama won re-election, and so it's been kind of drinking from a fire hose ever since. Um, but uh, essentially, it's been a, a great ride. Um, there really was the Affordable Care Act, at least in the space that I work in, there had never been anything like that that was such a regulatory burden on the average employer and all the way down to a 50-employee company. And to be honest with you, there are parts of the Affordable Care Act that are going down to 20, or 10, 15 employee companies where they just don't have the budget to have uh, an ERISA attorney on staff, to have HR consultants or high level HR consultants on staff. You know, people wear many hats in those kind of companies. You have essentially, you know, what we would call back in the day an office manager who's also running payroll, who's also your head of HR, who's also, you know, ordering supplies for the office. So um, I, what I would say is it, it's it's really become, I think, one of our uh, a, a really good uh, service that we offer to round that out, because, again, it's just in the last 10 years, uh, I hadn't I haven't seen anything um, like this in a 10 year period on a regulatory burden from uh, on employers. Uh, it, it's just it's been massive scale. And I think um, at Higginbotham, especially the fact that and we focus on those mid-sized employers, you know, 50 to let's say, you know, a thousand employers, 50 to a thousand employees. And a lot of times they're not getting those kind of services because it's just, 
the you know whomever they're purchasing insurance from, et cetera, maybe not have the scale um, to offer those services, or you know again they're a small fish in a big pond. And so I think that's really what we, where we've done a good job is taking a lot of these services and bringing them to those employers that never had these regulatory issues before, making them aware of it, and then making sure they're staying compliant. As we wrap up, give us maybe one or two of your top tips that come to mind in terms of regularly, you know, looking at these sort of updates and your guidelines and procedures. And so being mindful of that, obviously partnering with Higginbotham. So, I mean, what are some of your top tips? Yeah, I mean, essentially what I like to do is is always kind of start off with um, do a just a, a kind of a mock audit, do a compliance audit to begin with. Again, now we're talking about getting that foundation. Um, and then I know like we send out a, a thing annually that says, hey, here are all the rules that are coming out this year. So if you've got that foundation, like I said, now you can start building those layers on of we, we know we're compliant with everything. And now when a new rule comes out for this year, we're just adding this next layer and then this next layer. Um, so that usually is my top tip is, is if you haven't done any sort of, of self audit, do that um, first. You know, we have tons of, of, of checklists and things that employers can work off of to, to do that audit. Um, the DOL has its own kind of self audit tool that's great. Um, but kind of do that self audit, uh, especially, like I said, if you are a multi state employer, it's just become um, such a web of different. Uh, uh, agencies or governmental entities, like I said, all the way from federal to state to to, to even municipalities passing these laws, that it really is something that you need to keep a list of what municipalities are we in, you know, what are the different states have different minimum wages, different paid leave laws, et cetera. So where are we operating and what do we need to comply with in those uh, areas? Lots of complexity, but that's where you come in and, uh, you know, make it a lot more simple and easier to understand. So wrap up with where we can go to carry this conversation forward. Website for Higginbotham. Where do we go? It's real simple. It's just Higginbotham.com. Um, we also, uh, you can look for Higginbotham on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Um, we have lots of information on there. We post all, the, all of our compliance updates, our blog posts, uh, go to all of, the, all of our social media. So real easy to find us at any of those locations. Absolutely. Ross Carmichael, Managing Director of Compliance with Higginbotham. Thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate you having me, Jeremy.